What's up cousins, Anthony Jones here with Brigade Boats and in this video I'm going to show you step by step how I ran all of the aluminum decking in this 17 foot bass boat so stick around and I'll show you how I did it. Alright guys, this is the boat that we're going to be running aluminum decking in in this video. This is my new customer build. It's a low 170 and it's a full build man. This thing has been time consuming. Once I get the decking in, we're going to move on to paint and then final wiring. Um, everything is pre-wired and everything is pre-framed, so we're good to go on decking and cover it all up. We're going to start things off in the back of the boat. Guys, this is the Mega Hatch. This thing is massive. You could fit a couple bodies in there if you wanted to, but my customer is going to put multiple 48-volt lithium battery packs back here. This is an electrical only tournament boat because the size of this lid is so massive. It just limits what decking we actually need to do back here, so we just need to deck this side. And we need to deck that side and we're going to run a little strip down behind the lid to flush everything out. Now I have already shimmed out the factory framing to meet the framing that I added as you can see. So when we deck this, this will all be nice and flush and butt into the side panels that I fabbed out. Now I got some white poster board paper that I got from Walmart. I got eight of them. They're 33 cent each. And we're going to use these to cut up and make some templates. Um, primarily up front because this thing up front is going to be all kind of chopped up around some of them lids. And it's going to be really hard to just transfer measurements over um, onto a sheet of aluminum without templating it out in some way. And what I found is using this cardboard as templates, which I did for some of the vertical panels, just a little bit too tough to cut and get real accurate. I got this lid exactly where I wanted it. And then I went ahead and tapped two rivets in exactly where I wanted it. Now we're going to run a slight overhang on all of my flats coming into verticals on everything that I do because the verticals are going to get turf. And what I want to do is have that turf but nice and flush to this edge. And then my turf up top is gonna to kill into that edge like so, and it should just look really, really awesome and alleviate turf overlapping turf and then causing problems later. So again, we're, we're going with just a slight reveal. All right, and, I, and I'm using this piece actually to line everything up. So now that I got that out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and start cutting some stuff and uh, getting it in place. And I may just go ahead and template this out because I already measured and some things from the factory are a little bit iffy. So let's do this. These lids are just tacked into place temporarily. Once I deck everything, I'm actually going to pull those rivets, pull the lids, cut the holes out of the boat for all the latches. So right now they're in here for mock-up purpose. I did strip out this back area in between um, the hatch and that tray and uh, got my template cut. We're going to go ahead and transfer this over to some sheet aluminum and cut it out. All right, so what we're going to be cutting here is 090 sheet aluminum. I've got my template. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and I'm going to tape it in place and then trace it. What I'm going to be cutting this 090 sheet aluminum with is some Bauer shears. Went to Harbor Freight and bought a set. So these are, you know, like 65 bucks plus tax. Been traditionally cutting this sheet aluminum just with a circular saw. But with these, you can um, get some real accurate clean cuts. So we're going to go ahead and cut this out. Super smooth, cousin, super smooth. Use the Bauer shears, cut out my piece. In some of the tighter corners, just a little harder to get to, I put the old cutoff wheel on the Hitachi grinder. Went ahead and got in there and cut it out. And then uh, swapped on over to a uh, paddle wheel and uh, just feathered in some of the areas. Um, took it back, put it in the boat. There's a couple little areas that need to be grind, grinded down a little bit more and uh, just use that that wheel to take care of it so no big deal um, I think this is what we need so I'm gonna go stick it in the boat but that's how I did it I went ahead and marked out on the sheet aluminum 
where my framing is underneath. That way I have a good idea of where I need to drill my holes and put my countersink rivets to tie into something. Everything that's getting covered up is we're able to cover it up. So I don't need to get back in there for anything. The only spot I need to get to is in here um, when I do the final wiring. And that's not going to come until after paint and hydro turf and everything else. That'll be the very last thing. Everything's been tested. So all these lines work. So we could cover it up. I'm not pour foaming in here. We're not, we're not doing that. Uh, we pull the foam out to save weight, not hold water. So we're good to go. I'm going to go ahead and tie this thing down and I'll show you what I'm using to do that. This is the arsenal I use to do my aluminum work. So we'll start with um, how I drill a hole through this aluminum. I'm just using a Ryobi impact now the impact for me is key has more torque um gets through the aluminum a little bit better than a standard drill and then you can put these bits in and swap them out real easily um brand manufacturer doesn't really matter to me i don't i don't have a preference i've used them all uh, i've used the dewalt uh the milwaukee those are the ones i pr primarily use i've used this one before and it works good but it's a little too long um, the other ones are shorter, which most people complain about, but for what we're doing inside of these boats, the shorter is better. That way, when I'm drilling through floor systems and ribs, I'm not drilling through the hole. So uh, I, I don't use that one anymore, but you know, if that's what the store's got, try it out. I use another Ryobi with a countersink bit after I drill the hole through the aluminum and through the framing. Now these I got at Lowe's and you could get a variety pack of them. I'm using the five eighths. A lot of guys will use the half inch or the three eighths. Um, to represent the rivet head at the top, but I use the five eighths, man, because that thing burns through aluminum a little bit better, and I, I just like it. But you've got to look at it and gauge, you know, as you're drilling your hole to make sure you don't drill too deep. Rivet gun is a Milwaukee M12 battery power. This thing is bad to the bone. I can't speak highly enough about it. This is like a lifesaver. Um, there's other rivet guns, pneumatic rivet guns you can use on on a project of this scale. Uh, good luck using a hand one, but if you want to try it, go for it. The rivets I'm using are 3 16 inch rivets. These are the countersink rivets available on tinyboatnation.net. Use code BRIGADE for 5% off your order. Now these rivets, a lot of people aren't aware that you could get a countersink rivet. My, my, my camera's not focusing very well, but you could see that that head actually countersinks. So you drill your hole, you uh, countersink with the drill, you drop this bad boy in and then you rivet it down and it, it'll sit flush as you can see. And that way when you turf over it, it's invisible um, or if you carpet over it. So these again, 3 16th rivets, they've got a grip range of quarter inch to three eighths. Let's get to decking. It all attached that's actually 31 rivets holding this one panel down so you could see at a build of this nature how you could easily burn through 2,000 rivets um, man they go quick so now that that is all attached I will say I don't necessarily measure these out but I like to do my rivet spacing about a hands distance you know four to six inches now that I've shown you how I cut it how I attach it what I attach it with how I make my templates all that jazz I'm gonna go ahead and do this side over here I'm simply repeating the process and then we're going to fast forward to doing up front. Back deck is done, cousins. Turned out really nice. Super pumped to get that out of the way. Went ahead and attached the lid um, permanently. So we're good to go with that. And again, we've got that lip. You can see that all the way down to allow for turf to butt into this nice and flush. So now I'm going to go ahead and turn my attention to the front deck. I do need to mount this tray that goes in this area and the lid for my electric area. I'm um, tacking into place with a couple rivets. Again, all of these lids are just tacked into place temporarily to allow me to go ahead and deck it. Um, later on in the build, I'm going to pull all these lids again, cut holes for the latches, and then do hydro turf inside the compartments and all the final wiring. But I want to go ahead and get it decked now, so therefore the lids need to be temporary in place. 
Um, it's just a time schedule, guys. Um, we're trying to get this boat to paint. I want all the decking on before it goes to paint. With that, I'll shut up, and we're going to get to templating out this front deck, just repeating the process that I did in the back. Test fitting the piece and um, somewhere in the middle of me making the paper template and tracing it, maybe my cut was a little off and then obviously the paper is a lot thinner than 090. Um, some of these are just a little bit off so I'm just marking, trimming some excess and I'm going to start on this side and try to get this to fit and then I'll just try to tweak that side and if I got to trim more and mark more, I'll do that but I'm just kind of working my way with it and uh, go back out there, grind on a little bit, bring it back in. All right, I got this piece tacked into place. Just stuck some rivets and some corners just to hold it down. And I went ahead and had marked where all my framing was that I want to hit beforehand before attaching this down. Um, you know, this is going to be another 30 or 40 rivets to tie this down. I'm running low on daylight. So I'm going to go ahead and template out the other side and see if I could get it cut. And then that'll just leave me with some small strips in between some hatches. I was able to take the template I used on that side and actually flip it over. And I was impressed. It was really close to um, all my measurements that worked out on that side. I had to trim a little bit off the hatch and then I added a little bit of material in here. And uh, beyond that, it was really, really close. So I was able to modify that template and reuse it. And uh, we're gonna trace this out and install this part. All right, gentlemen, got this part installed. Nice, tight fit. I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. I'm going to come back at the end and do the whole deck all at the same time as far as the rivets inside the perimeter, tying it into the framing. But right now, I'm just trying to move forward. It's getting late into the night. So uh, over here, chugging coffee. Got this template made, and I'm just going to work my way back. Now I'm getting to the smaller little pieces, which is uh, super simple to do these. Got to do a few over there, just accounting for my reveal for my turf on my vertical. And then again, the, the reason I notched this out is because it's a rounded corner, and I just want to make sure this turf has something to bite to, as opposed to rounding my aluminum and having a little tiny pointy sliver. So just a preference. All right, guys, back at it. New day. Got this part installed late last night. As you can see, got to where the turf butts underneath with that little overhang. Had to trim this hatch lid to uh, complete that turn. Turned out nice. I got the first part of the day installed. This side over here, I've got some strips to run. Got some strips to run around that lid. A strip down here. And then I've got this little triangle up front. I'm about to install this little sliver right here up against this electronics box. And I wanted to show you guys what I'm doing here is I take a bead of silicone and just squirt it down in that little crack where this framing hits this panel. Now in this boat, this factory panel runs all the way to the floor. Therefore, if water goes and gets down in behind one of these channels, it's gonna get in there. So anywhere that I've got a hatch, right directly up against this panel. I'm going to silicone it and then I'm going to put my piece down, rivet it in place, and then I'm going to silicone the perimeter before I do the hydro turf. I'm really only concerned about it in this hatch and over there on the rod locker. Up front, this area has some poor foam and this is open because that's a live well. So I don't necessarily care if water beads down in there. It's going to direct to the channels and to the back of the boat. But in this area, 
Definitely don't want water getting in my electrical box. Wanted to share with you real quick how I do this. If you've never used these shears before and you go get a set to do this, um, wanted to show you kind of how I'm doing it. Now you'll see at the end, you've got these two guides and in the middle is the, the blade that oscillates up and down and actually shears the aluminum. Now here's my measurement. It's just gonna be a strip. So it's an inch and three quarters is the part that I want. So what I'm doing is when I pull my tape, I'm actually marking past the three quarter mark. So an inch and three quarters to the edge of that mark and then that mark offsets the measurement. I make my line. And then what I do is when I take my shears, I'm actually lining this guide up over the line, just like that to cut the line. And if you could see this drop here, you'll see the permanent marker on the inside of this, uh, this piece. And um, that's what it's doing. It's gonna cut that. And so it's a lot less forgiving than like a circular saw because if you cut the wrong side of the line, your measurement's gonna be off a of fat, quarter of an inch and it's just not going to work for you so you've really got to pay attention to your to how you measure it where you mark it and then how you cut it with these but i'll tell you what besides that man these things are safer cleaner um more precise cut as far as the cleanliness of the cut than a circular saw there's no turning back for me and an added benefit of using the shears over a circular saw for aluminum cutting is that I get to save all of the scrap pieces so when I accumulate enough of it I could take a bunch of this to an aluminum recycler and actually sell it and get some money for it. All right almost there got these little strips in around the lids and I actually got that stripped out around the step and uh, the last things I need to do are these side steps template them out cut them out and I'll be home free. All right, now that I've got the two cockpit side steps sheeted and riveted down, the only thing left to wrap up the decking portion of this build is to make my way back up front to where I was earlier in the video on that large piece and this large piece here that I marked out the framing on and get all the rivets in it. for joining me for arts and crafts as I templated out all this aluminum. As you can see, I got all the decking in and riveted into place. And I hope you took something away from this video, guys. That's what it's all about. Uh, just a final note again, this hatch, it's gotta come back out. This one, this one, this one, this one. These get hydro turf, and then this one's actually getting a seat pedestal, and it's just gonna be easier to pull the hatch back out. But I wanted to get all the decking in before this thing goes to paint. So that'll be the next stage. She's going to paint tomorrow. And uh, man, it's gonna be a beautiful, beautiful boat. Can't wait to share the final result with you guys. So stick around, stay tuned, subscribe to the channel if you've yet to do so, um, because we're gonna be building more boats like this, Brigade Boats. See you guys on the next one.